Hey everyone, this is Troy. So I want to do something a little different in this video. I'm just going to read you one of my devotionals out of my book, 30 Days of Inspiration and Hope. So I'm going to read you day 10 and I hope you enjoy it. It's called Still and Quiet. Galatians 4, 6 through 7 says, Because you are sons, God has sent forth the Spirit of His Son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Therefore, you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir through God. I remember one night when my daughter Mirabelle was a small baby. I began to read her a children's book. Per perhaps I should more specifically say that I attempted to read her a children's book. She squirmed so much that she barely even looked at the characters on the pages. As she rolled around and crawled back and forth, I kept picking her up and placing her back in front of the book. Reading a book was the first part of the routine that we went through every night before bed. The next step would be to sing her a short song. Finally, we would pray and then lay her down for the night. Sometimes the routine seemed impossible to get through. This particular evening, when she was being especially uncooperative, I found myself saying to her, if you'll just sit still and be quiet, we will get through this a whole lot faster. As I said these words to my child, I saw a picture of myself and God. I am under the impression that one of the reasons God designed childhood to last so many years is because children help teach us lessons that take most of us a long time to learn. When we accept Jesus Christ as our Savior, we enter into a family of believers. Guess which role we get to play? We are God's children, and God is our Father. Why is it that God chose to use the structure of the family as a picture of His relationship with His people? The answer should be simple to see. We often act a whole lot like whiny, loud, squirmy children who do not realize that their point of view is less than the best. It can be difficult for us to believe that what we see and understand with our natural eyes is not all there is. In fact, we sometimes struggle to believe that our Father knows what is best for us. Even so, the truth is that a loving parent can always understand more see further into the future, and be able to make better decisions than a baby. As children grow older, they still have to listen to their parents. They also begin to understand that waiting patiently and sitting still and quiet are actually beneficial responses to what their parents say. Isaiah 30, 15 says, For thus the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, has said, In repentance and rest you will be saved. In quietness and trust is your strength but you were not willing. In this verse, God speaks to the children of Israel, reminding them that their attitude should have been one of repentance, rest, quietness, and trust. Instead of taking on this attitude, they had chosen to react negatively to His instructions. The same way loving parents desire good for their children, God desires good for His children. I understand that earthly parents make mistakes but God's love is perfect. When we act like the unwilling children of Israel, I believe that it is because we are not accepting just how much God really does love us. We may not want to listen to God's wisdom, we may not desire to seek Him, or we may even make mistakes that we feel like we cannot bring to Him. Through all of this, God still loves us perfectly. God still wants us to draw near to Him with our mouths and with our hearts. For that reference, see Matthew 15, 8. In order to do so, we need to accept the childlikeness that precedes repentance and trust. We need to rest in Him instead of relying on temporary comfort. God loves you more than an earthly parent could ever love you. And He really does know and desire what is best for you. How He demonstrated His amazing love for us is stated best in 1 John 4, 9. It says, By this the love of God was manifested in us, that God has sent His only begotten Son into the world so that we might live through Him. And then I have a couple application questions here at the end that I want to read. And while I'm reading these, I just want you to think about this and respond. And then if there's something that you need to say to God based on that response, go ahead and do it. The first one is, Do you believe that God really desires your best? What does the Bible say about God's plan for you? 
Can you identify anything in your life that goes against the will of God? Will you trust God's love enough today to ask Him to help you overcome in that area? I really hope you all enjoy this devotional today. There's 30 of these in this book, so I hope you all get a copy of it. I also just want to quickly add, what I learned from my daughter Mirabelle when she was a baby, I'm still learning now. So I haven't got this all down perfectly. But the more, we've got three girls now, three kids, and the more that I see the way that I respond to my children's actions, the more I'm able to see a clear picture of how God responds to us. Now, I'm not perfect as a parent, and none of us can be perfect on this earth, but God is perfect. No matter how far we think we've run away from Him, no matter how much damage we think we've done to that relationship, God still loves us. And I'm just reminded of the story of the prodigal son where the son took his inheritance and he went off and he spent all of it. He had nothing left to show for himself. He spent all of it. And then he came back wanting to be a servant, hopefully in his father's house, because he had no other opportunities. And yet the father was standing out on the road, looking for him from a distance. And when he saw him, he ran to him. That's how much God loves us. He's not looking at the mistakes. He's not looking at at the sins. He's not looking at the things that we've done, the places where we've messed up. He's looking at the potential that you have in Christ if you will return to Him and if you'll accept the grace and the love of God today. If you haven't done that, you can do it right now. You can accept the grace that God has shown you and the love that He's shown you simply by repenting and believing in Christ as your Lord and Savior and saying, God, I've messed up. I haven't done everything right. I admit it. And I also admit that I need you. I believe that you sent Jesus to die on a cross to be the sacrifice, to be the replacement for the punishment that I deserved, God. So I receive that now in the name of Jesus, and I believe that I am saved and that I have the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus. If you prayed that prayer with me, let me know. Don't stop there. Find a Bible-believing church. Find a place where you can grow and you can fellowship with other believers. Share this video with someone who needs it. I love y'all, and I'll see y'all next time.